degrees. For tonight, a few lingering showers will drop back into the 60s. A mix of sun and clouds for Thursday, less humid with highs in the low 80s. Scattered showers and thunderstorms return for Friday. 772 right now. Light rain. Some showers at our Canal Park location. 833 on the Talk of the Town Talk, 100.7 FM. Jason Aiello, Rocco Laduca, Mark Wilbur in his studio. Woo! All right. Uh, let's see. Did the smoke clear? Yeah, I guess so. We had to take a break to calm a few people down here this morning. Congressman Claudia hey, Tenney. Uh, oh, hey! Hey! Oh, hey, I'm on the video. Oh, oh. So, it's all right. Hey, we'll give you a chance. It's all right. What is she on? I don't know. Uh, Claudia, you all right? You good? Oh, yeah. Let me just. I'd like to make a really important point before we move on, when we get into this whole bipartisanship issue and, and people actually standing for something. Oh, shoot. Um, the, uh, you know, think about this. The New York State Assembly is lopsided. When I was in it, it was 108 to 42, 108 Democrats to 42 Republicans. And no real significant Substantive legislation has passed the state assemblies by a Republican since 1972, 74, I think, 74. And uh, if Anthony Bernice is so bipartisan, why does he continue to vote down all the reforms that would allow Republicans to bring bills to the floor if they really care about so-called democracy and good government? Why does he vote down the reforms that would allow Republicans to bring those bills to the floor and let us have an up or down vote? So that's a reform that's been offered every time, he, you know, it's been offered several times while he's been a member of the state assembly, and he's voted it down, um, along with a number of other reforms. Mm-hmm. So if he really cares about good government and democracy and bipartisanship, why does he do that? Well, and, and uh, I think the conversation will continue, obviously, as he's your opponent. And uh, with Ron in studio, I think, uh, you know, the question of the town hall, uh, that was a question that came up early in the uh, in, in the um, the beginning of your uh, your time as a, a Congress. Sure, it's become a false political weapon, though. I mean, that's really what it is. I mean, there isn't anyone more transparent and more willing to talk and discuss and debate the issues than I am. And I have stood on the forefront of going up against the most powerful people, and I have called them out on their corruption in our in our state, in our local community, and I've done that when they're at the peak of their, you know, their power. I haven't waited till the dust settles and the road kills on the road and then go over and say, yeah, you know what, I'm going to put my hand over this, you know, road kill and send my foot on it and raise my hand and say, I got this, you know, after it's all over. And I think that's what the difference between me and Anthony Brindisi is. You know, the, the OD tries to make an equivalence. You know, I called out Sheldon Silver in 2012. He didn't do anything about it until he was indicted, and it was it was all it was all been over. I mean, the thing with Sheldon Silver is done. They'd already picked somebody else. So to make it an equivalent, you know, here's a guy who, after the guy covered up sexual harassment claims, he voted for him for speaker later, and now he claims to be the champion of women. I mean, those are important things. I mean, when it counts to stand up for women and these young women who sat right near me in the assembly, who were victims of sexual harassment. And then to say you're going to still vote for the same guy for speaker after he bypassed their rules, tried to cover it up, not only just violating these, you know, the, the, the rights of these women, but also the, the rules of the assembly and, and to vote for someone to, to continue to run our house time and time again. It wasn't like, okay, fine, Sheldon Silver, you know, the indictments were imminent, things where he was on his way out, and to say, yeah, yeah, I, I'm going to jump on board now. I mean, there's a big difference between – when you stand up, I mean, standing up and, and calling into question many of the things that have gone on in our state and our local community, uh, you know, his classic case is, this, you know, the situation with the hospital where, you know, he's, he's just, as, as he calls it, radio silence. I mean, where is he on this stuff? And it took a diligent group to uh, come out with a FOIA request to find out that there was a lot of political maneuvering around behind the scenes, and they were determining where the hospital was going to go. In fact, it wasn't necessarily the people at St. Luke's. And I actually don't, you know, I just like to see good government. I like to see good use of the taxpayer money. And I just want to see people, you know, be honest about the things. So the whole town hall thing is one of those things. The Democrats are just looking for something to try to, you know, oh, she's not doing a town hall. Well, you know, their definition of what a town hall is, is not about open dialogue and discussing the issues and debating them and respectfully disagreeing. 
their idea is just a shouting match and to bring in their protest sign and to say terrible things about me and all these horrible things I've done when I'm nothing more than a single mom who raised my son uh, at, and took care of my parents, tried to keep my family business alive, and I've never even gotten a speeding ticket. But so, you know, they have this political, you know, character assassination that they're trying to attack me for, which to me is just like, is that is that really productive dialogue? And I'm not the only one this is happening to. This is across the country because – Let's talk about the policies that we're talking about. Tax cuts. Uh, yeah, I want to get in. I want to get into one that both uh, both member both parties, I guess, could agree on, and that was one yesterday where the House voted to uh, repeal Obamacare's the medical device tax, which I know uh, that was something I think a press release that you put out. But uh, both mm -hmm. members, uh, both parties, uh, have criticized uh, that innovation, I guess, as well. So, tell us, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, I co-sponsored the bill. It's been hurting. Uh, our small business community is the tax that is affecting our, uh, our businesses, and we needed to do something about it. We did. Uh, you know, there's a lot of frustrating things sometimes in, in government in Washington, but you have to continue to fight the fight, and that was a win yesterday. Let's see what the Senate does. You know, the Senate has been very disappointing. We've had a number of great initiatives that were passed. Um, one of them that's a huge disappointment to me yesterday is we fought very hard to get the gym amendment uh, for the Coliseum gym in Rome, you know how much we right. worked on getting that for the citizens group. We got it included. It went through a voice vote. It was passed unanimously in the House of Representatives. And our senators, our, our U.S. senators, did not stand up and get it passed in the Senate. And we fought to try to get them to do their part in, doing, in, in having that in. And now we're just going to have to continue to fight. I'm going to try to set up a, you know, a meeting with the executive branch and maybe a meeting with our uh, Secretary of Defense, General Mattis, about how we can do something to help our veterans. To me, it's Chuck Schumer and Kirsten Gillibrand couldn't stand up and get this gym amendment, a small, uh, you know, it's na nationwide, but to help our veterans and our community. If they couldn't stand up to do that, they have no business going out and saying we support veterans because this is a local issue that affects veterans in our region who served our country honorably, who wanted to use this gym, and it's been a veterans and the citizens group fought for this. We got it passed in the House. We did our job, and the Senate uh, dropped the ball. And I'm going to continue to fight for it. I'm going to try it through the executive branch and do what I can. Was it uh, just Democrats? Was it just Democrats who opposed that, or did uh, Republicans oppose it well, as well? Well, you have to have your state senate, your your state U.S. senator has to support these initiatives in the House, and that was what they didn't support it. So we, ha you know, in the Senate, and so we needed the Senate. We needed Schumer and Gillibrand oh, okay. to support it, and we had communications with them, and they said that they were. I got a communication from one of their staff who said, you know, we're going to make sure this gets through and everything, and it, and it didn't. And, and we, they never put in the legislation or the, the initiative to do it, and we just don't know why. Huh. And so, you know, if we can work with them to try to get it in again, maybe, I don't know if it's too late, but we're going to try now on the executive side. Mm -hmm. uh, Claudia, before we go, I know we got behind mm -hmm. this morning, uh, maybe three or four minutes left. Uh, your thoughts, I know in your... Uh, your area here, your constituents, there are a lot of farms and the uh, Trump administration announcing uh, some emergency relief for farmers hurt by uh, some of the tariffs that are imposed, $12 billion in emergency relief. Uh, your thoughts on that and, and, and going forward, yeah. does this help? I think what the president trying to see, is seeing is that there is a problem, and uh, we have tried to do something about it. We, our farm, family farms, which we need to preserve, I talked to. Congressman Yoho yesterday, he's on the Ag Committee, he's a veterinarian, uh, about some of the initiatives we got to try to get to the floor. But, again, if we can't get them passed in the Senate, they die in the House. We do a great job there. We need the president to act. And I think that's why the president is reacting. He's frustrated. I know it's, uh, people are criticizing him because it's spending. Mm -hmm. But, look, at, we need to preserve our family farms. They are a tradition, and they are small businesses just like any other. And they're being destroyed by the weight of government, mostly the state government with the high taxes, especially property taxes, um, their inability, you know, the high wages that we have in the state that are mandated, and many mandates that come down from the state government on the, and on, and the other side of it is, you know, the federal note pricing, which we need to help them find a way to have better economies of scale with a smaller operation. And so I think the president's reaction was let's give them some aid while we try to balance this, uh, you know, imbalance in trade and the president's using the tariff, which is what all of our competitors are using as tariffs. And ideally, we'd like to see no tariffs. We'd like to have a true free market. 
And I think that's what the president's trying to realign our marketing relationship and get rid of the deficit that we have on trade. Hey, Claudia, but, does the um, president have too much power with respect to tariffs? There's a movement to um, enact legislation that would not allow the